In the sport of MMA, an elite level grappler that falls in love with striking is a recurring story. Many of the greatest fighters in mixed martial arts have started out as one-dimensional, and then after their first knockout win, go on to improve enough to be feared on the feet just like they are on the ground. Gilbert Burns is a fighter who seems to fit into this narrative, and has quickly emerged as the dark horse top contender of the welterweight division because of it. But the current champion of that division also fits into that narrative, and history shows us that Gilbert is far from invincible. So this raises the question, how good is Gilbert Burns' striking? What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim. So I'm going to take a look at the striking skills of Gilbert Burns. To do that, I'm going to analyze six key elements of striking as they pertain to the sport of MMA. For each category, I give him a score from 1 to 10, and at the end of the video, I take an average of those scores and give an overall grade. I base these scores off my own observations of their most recent fights of relevance, and the quality of the opponents that they have faced. Every fight begins from a distance, so let's break down his defensive distancing first. As I'm sure you already know by now, this is how a fighter uses footwork, clinching, and distance to evade strikes and protect themselves. At first glance, it doesn't seem like Gilbert Burns is doing anything special in this department, but when you take a closer look at what he's doing, you find out that it is very effective. When an opponent charges forward, Gilbert's typical reaction is to stand his ground and fire back. This is a very simple strategy that will give you variable success depending on how you use it. For Justin Gaethje, I took points away from him for doing this, because when he does it, he shells up and the shots that he throws back are powerful, but are generally pretty easy to avoid. When Burns does it, he fires back with quick and powerful combinations. It's not a perfect strategy, and sometimes he does get caught when doing this, but I think it still does a good job at deterring most fighters from entering into punching range with him for very long. When he decides not to stand and trade, he does have some pretty subtle footwork that keeps him where he needs to be. He's a pretty difficult fighter to corral, and at times it seems like he has eyes on the back of his head because he easily recognizes where he is in relation to the cage while still dodging out of range of attacks. He tends to come out wide and at an angle, and will immediately flip the script and take the center of the octagon if you're not careful. Only the most aggressive of fighters have been able to trap him. I will say that given his excellent ground skills, he sometimes just allows himself to be trapped. That way, he can clinch, pummel, and reverse the position. With that advanced grappling, he keeps himself safe from most of the bigger shots in the clinch. When I first started watching tape on Burns, I didn't expect to see such good defensive distancing. And like I said, it's not the most elegant of styles, but it's worked pretty well for him so far. He needs to be careful who he decides to stand and trade with, and perhaps would benefit from giving some ground to the more accurate and rangy strikers. But I think his defensive distancing is better than many will give him credit for. So for this category, he gets an 8 out of 10. Next is technical defense, which is basically his ability to block, parry, move his head, and check kicks. I also critique the defensive aspects of his stance. Burns tends to employ a very low and wide boxing stance, with his hands close to his chin and his weight distributed evenly. The wideness of his stance does leave him vulnerable to kicks, and he's not that good at checking them either. One thing he is very good at though is countering with heavy punches when his opponents try to attack his legs. It's the classic strategy of eating the leg kick to land the heavy hook. It works especially well against guys who don't set up their kicks with their hands first, but it is difficult to do against guys who are much quicker or have a very long reach with their legs. When you miss with the counter hook, you basically just ate a damaging leg kick for nothing. So for this reason, I would like to see Dorino be a little bit more bouncy on his feet and make more of an effort to check those kicks sometimes. He does have a bit of a bounce to his step at the start of rounds, but he does settle down a little bit shortly after. While that wide stance makes it hard to protect your legs, it does provide other benefits. Gilbert Burns is a feared grappler that will threaten with the takedown if you're not careful. Burns has been known to time his enemy's kicks or blitz and change levels to set up his wrestling. Gilbert will also fake the level change, not just to keep them guessing but also as a form of head movement to duck out of the way of the big shots. He doesn't do a whole lot of head movement other than that though. You will notice him kind of just slipping his head from side to side at range, but when the punches start flying, head movement is the last thing he's thinking about. In those exchanges, he will sometimes get caught with his chin up in the air as well. And when he drags that left hand of his, he tends to get caught with a big right hand counter. 
When he's not getting drawn into crazy brawls though, his hands are up high and blocking most shots, and his chin is tucked. So there are some things that he needs to work on, but all in all, he has some pretty solid technique. So for technical defense, he gets a 7.25. Last category of defense is Gilbert's chin, or durability in other words. As I've mentioned, Burns has been in some heavy firefights throughout his career. Most of them he's come out pretty unscathed, but he has been rocked on occasion when he gets a bit too sloppy. Only a few fighters have been able to cut or bruise him throughout his time in the UFC. His only loss by knockout came at the hands of Dan Hooker. This was back when Gilbert fought at lightweight. I do feel that cutting weight can degrade your chin to an extent, but Gilbert Burns was never a big lightweight, so I don't think I can really use that as an excuse for him. I think Hooker is just a better, more powerful striker that caught him clean. As far as how his chin is held up against other power punchers, I have to say he really hasn't fought too many of them. Tyron Woodley was probably the most powerful puncher he's fought so far. He did take some shots from him, so that's definitely a credit to Gilbert's durability. Other than his KO loss, I think that Gilbert's chin is really good, but until I see how it holds up against the more powerful guys in the welterweight division, the best I can give him is an 8 out of 10 for durability. Now we get to talk about the offensive side of things. First I'll go over Gilbert's offensive distancing. This is how a fighter uses footwork and cage control to close the distance and land shots. Burns is a pretty aggressive fighter that, as I have mentioned before, rarely gives any ground. He's one of the smaller men of the division, but he's able to work around that disadvantage by using his speed and his kicks. Using the longest extremity of his body and moving quicker than his opponent, he's able to leap in and throw kicks from a distance and be back out before he gets countered. He usually has really good timing with these kicks and only gets caught coming in against the very fast and accurate welterweight strikers. Burns' kicks are a huge part of his distance management and setups, and I'm going to talk even more about them later in the video. Many fighters like to use the cage to defend against takedowns, and since Gilbert is such an excellent grappler, a lot of fighters will allow themselves to be corralled against defense by him. This works to his advantage when he wants to utilize his striking offense. As I mentioned before, Dorino will leap in with quick shots such as kicks and leap in uppercuts, but he also has a more heavy blitz where he comes in with big combinations. Because because of Burns' compact frame and power, he is very dangerous in the pocket. He overwhelms fighters at this range. It causes them to clinch or go for takedowns to protect themselves. Oh, you're a wrestler <laughs> Which of course is perfectly fine by him because of his jujitsu skills. If they remain in the clinch though, he is still dangerous from there too. The one major flaw with his offensive distancing is that sometimes as he goes to close that distance, he loads up and telegraphs his strikes very heavily. This gives his opponents a tell that they can use to get out of range, or worse, counter him as he comes in. So aside from that, I think that Gilbert does a good job of being the aggressor and first to fire in most exchanges. I wouldn't exactly call him a pressure fighter, but his speed and grappling prowess usually allows him to dictate the pace and range of each round. So for offensive distancing, I'm going to give him a 7.5. Moving on to the next category, I'm going to critique Gilbert's offensive technique. This is basically a bunch of things such as dynamism, output, accuracy, timing, fakes, feints, weapons of choice, and combinations of choice. Burns has a pretty big arsenal of strikes at his disposal. He doesn't throw too much flashy stuff other than the occasional spinning back kick or flying knee. He pretty much just sticks to a variety of kicks and punches. He does throw elbows and knees on occasion, but they aren't the core of his game like they are for fighters like Anderson Silva or John Jones. As I mentioned before, the key element of his striking game are his kicks. He beats up the lead leg calf of his opponents with fast chopping outside kicks. He will go to the inside of the leg and the body as well. Many fighters tend to set up their kicks with their hands, while Gilbert seems to be the opposite. That strategy does present some opportunities for his foes to counter him, but he makes it work for the most part because he has excellent fakes, feints, and timing. It's difficult for his opponents to get a read on when to counter him because he feints the kick several times before he actually goes for it. He fakes the takedown a lot too by changing his level, which gives him the opportunity to punch to the body. There are three types of punches that have worked very well for him throughout his career. They are the uppercut, the overhand right, and the counter left hook. The uppercut is the more versatile technique for him because he throws it with both hands and from multiple ranges. 
The overhand right is a useful tool for him because that's a great punch to throw at taller guys, and he's notably shorter than most of his opponents. Even if he happens to be the same height, it doesn't seem like it because he lowers his stance. As I stated before, he loads up on his punches sometimes, and the overhand right is a punch he struggles not to telegraph. The counter left hook that he throws is the one that catches a lot of guys by surprise, and has been his best move against aggressive fighters that don't bring their hands back up to their face. The biggest thing that I have to take points away for is when Burns starts to brawl. It's entertaining to watch and some guys excel in those types of firefights. There aren't many people willing to engage in the pocket like that with Dorino either. But when they do, he tends to close his eyes and swing wildly. It's pretty hard to hit your target and stay safe when you're just putting your head down and windmilling your arms. Plus, it's something that takes away from what would be a really decent accuracy statistic. So Burns has the tools to finish the job in more than one way, but he needs to stay cool, calm, and collected in the heat of battle to utilize those tools effectively. So for offensive technique, I'm going to give him an 8.25. Last but not least, I'll analyze Burns' power or his ability to cause damage. So Gilbert Burns does have several KO TKO wins on his record. Out of those six wins, three have been via TKO, like his win against Damian Maya. He dropped Maya with a punch and then finished him on the ground. When you look at Maya on the ground, he seems to be coherent and prepared to continue defending as best as he can. He wasn't able to, obviously, but I thought it was worth noting that Damien seemed to have his whereabouts still, after eating Gilbert Burns' best shot. We see a similar situation in his fights against Alban Mercier and Tyron Woodley, except in those fights, he was unable to finish the job. I don't know if that has more to do with him not being able to convert on the follow-up, or his opponents just having enough of their wits to keep going once it hit the ground. But either way, I think it says something about his power. He has two one-punch KOs in the UFC, both of which are as pretty as it gets as far as knockouts go. I don't really know how good those fighters' chins are though, so it's hard to say if Gilbert Burns really has that touch of death. Plus, both those KO wins were at lightweight, so it might be that the move up in weight has taken away from his ability to end the fight in one punch. Don't get me wrong, you do not want this guy to connect with a clean shot, because it's not going to feel good but I can't quite put him up with the top knockout artists of the sport. One thing that does round out this score though in this category is his ability to cause damage to the rest of the body, not just the head. He beats up the legs of pretty much every person he fights and deals out punishment to the body as well. I think we need to see what his power can do at welterweight a little bit more before I can go giving him a crazy score. So for now, I'll place him at an 8.25 for power. When all the scores are tallied up, it gives Gilbert Burns the overall score of about 7.9. The grappler that falls in love with their striking is a story that sometimes doesn't have a very happy ending. But I don't think that ending applies to Mr. Burns. He's no champion kickboxer, but he has adapted his striking abilities well for the sport of MMA, and they play off of his excellent grappling skills quite nicely. The dark horse of the welterweight division still has some tough tests in his future, because that weight class is full of guys who are just as well-rounded as he is. But I do think that he is up for the challenge. So that just about does it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stick around to the end of the video and you can see all the rankings of the fighters that I've done in these videos. And thanks so much for watching. Take care.